The Jubilee is about celebrating the Queen's long service, but this day was perhaps more about what life will look like after. As her heirs to the throne arrived at St. Paul's Cathedral for a service of thanksgiving, she was watching on TV from home. The Archbishop of York nodded to the Queen's love of horses in his sermon. We are sorry that you're not here with us this morning, but we are so glad that you are still in the saddle. Without the Queen, the most anticipated moment was the reappearance of Prince Harry and his wife Meghan back in the UK from California after more than two years. They received mostly cheers, but also a few boos as they were seated far from Harry's brother, Prince William. Harry and Meghan have made allegations of neglect and racism, which this royal commentator says have hurt Harry's reputation. People now have a very negative view of both of them. Ten years ago, Harry was easily the most popular person after the Queen, but I'm afraid that goodwill has been evaporating with all the attacks on the monarchy. <laughs> on the streets, though, we found revelers sporting Meghan and Harry masks and others who were more forgiving. I don't think there's anything wrong with Harry and Meghan, to be honest. Um, they want to live their life privately, and we just have to give them the opportunity. He's a grandson. He should be here. She is a grandson's wife. Definitely she should be here. Inspired by her dedication. Inside St. Paul's, speakers heap praise on the Queen for her devotion to her country and the Commonwealth. Canada's High Commissioner, who attended the service, said any of her personal appearances will now take on added significance. We're into a, a, a conversion period. That's obvious uh, for, the, uh, for the first time uh, Prince Charles uh, delivered the most recent speech from the throne. That indicates changes in the wind. The Queen also cancelled Saturday's public appearance, but the thank yous and goodbyes will continue with gala performances and parties over the weekend. So Chris, as you said, Harry and Meghan had a relatively positive crowd reaction when they arrived, not so Prime Minister Boris Johnson and his wife. He got a lot of boos. Uh, there's been a huge controversy that could lead to a rebellion by his backbench MPs over this report by Sue Gray that found that uh, Johnson and his office, office staffers rampantly violated their own COVID-19 rules. He got fined and ended up having to even apologize to the Queen for a party at Downing Street just before Prince Philip's funeral. Bottom line, what's your sense of how this then plays out? If 15% of his uh, caucus asked for a leadership convention, asked for a vote, they're going to get it. It looked like he might be able to get around this, but it's slowly been eroding his credibility. And literally within hours of all of that coming down, he could be in a big fight for his job. All right, never boring on your beat. Chris, thank you.